My name is Gretel Kalina. Now I'm going to quickly ask our wonderful panel. Oh, we can't really do that because we've got two mics. Everyone, put your heads together around the central mic and say who you are and where you're from. We'll start with you. Hey, I'm Jordan Munns and um, I'm from Model Farms High, which is in the Hills District. Okay. Well, actually, let's ask you about your work, seeing as it's so labour-intensive passing the mic around there. Are you happy? This is my best side. You're lucky. Do you want me to go back a bit so you can see more people? Not further back. That would be offensive. Okay. Who here is related to someone on the panel? All right. Who here? Some of you are ashamed to put your hands up. Why? Why is that? And some of you have just suddenly realised you're related to them. What's going on? Oh, yeah, the DNA test came through. Okay. Who here is an HSC student? Put your hands up proudly. And you're looking for quick tips on how to get into Art Express. Is that correct? All right. That'll be our focus. How to get into Art Express. Are we happy with that? You can all hear us happily and see us over there. All right. Jordan, tell us which is your piece of work. Um, so mine's the... Uh, it's photo media. It's up when you walk in. Just go straight forward. Um, it's called Long After I'm Gone. And it's basically looking at the idea of um, how everyone's a bit... Everyone's kind of obsessed with this idea of leaving behind a legacy in what they did and the things they achieved and how everyone wants to be remembered for what they did, not for who they were. So that kind of whole idea of, of like what we do, leaving behind something. Do you think that's a male obsession, the notion of a legacy? I think it's a human obsession. Like, do you? Yeah. It's interesting though, not isn't it? Not to be it? sexist or anything, Gretel. No, no, it's not sexist, it's <laughs> wise. I think most of the women here would agree that men are more obsessed with leaving some sort of monument of themselves behind on the earth and women are not. And neither is better than the other. But isn't it interesting, a legacy, because the piece of art has itself turned out to be a legacy to a former relationship, hasn't it, Jordan? Do tell. Oh, well, the girl in, my, in the photo is actually my ex-girlfriend, but... She's your ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Was it the work of art that made you break up? Um, yeah, no, no, it was, um, it was a whole bunch of other things, but, yeah. It, that, these are called directional mics, which means you've got to talk right into them. Okay. Okay, so it was other things, but she modelled for it. Yeah, we, well, we did the photo shoot at my house, so just right. in a spare room. Okay, would you suggest to these lovely students over here... No, this is all good. What were you thinking they were doing in the spare room? <laughs> I completely believe they were taking photos. Sometimes. Is that why you broke up? No, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right. So there she is. Did she have the things on her head at the time or did you add those after you broke up <laughs> in Photoshop? Um, well, the, the whole idea of the cloth, that was all actually, like, that was physical, but then the whole, um, the tower on the head, the, cold, the leopard eyes, that was all added in post-processing, so... All right, and do you study photography? Um, I did photography as an elective, but... Not really. I, I kind of just, I've always done a bit of like freelance stuff, so kind of that gave me a bit of experience with Photoshop. All right. Final question, and I know every artist hates to answer this. Where did you get the actual idea from? Um, well, I guess over the last, well, over 2011, a lot of prominent people died, and it was in the news a lot. And I kind of realised as, as I watched these kind of newscasts, everyone would kind of focus on what, on what they left behind, what the person did. Even with military deaths, um, a lot of the time, like, because they were military men or because they served, served the nation, like, they, they were kind of recognised highly and, and they were like, thank you for serving our country, all that kind of thing, so, which I think is amazing, but also I realised that, like, it made me realise that what, what you do on Earth kind of becomes really important or tenfold important when you die. I think that is very interesting and great observation. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right, now we'll go to one of our girls down there. How about we talk to Holly? Holly, yours is interesting. Would you classify it as sculpture? Well, I put mine is as collection of works because there's sort of like a mixture between like photo media as well as like resin sculpture. So, sorry, do you, do you enter in a category when you go in the HSC? Yeah, so you can do like painting, drawing, sculpture collection and yours was called what what was your category i did collection of works but then in the catalog they transferred it to sculpture all by themselves yeah. right okay so tell us what what's happening 
So mine's called The Domicile of Invisible Processes. And it's sort of like, a, it's all like these resin sculptures with tree roots in them, as well as like, I sort of mimicked biology cell slides and things like that to sort of represent like human DNA and like the fragility of the human body, as well as like microscopic processes of healing and things like that. And where did you get the idea? Um, well, I live with, I have Crohn's disease and anemia, like ongoing anemia. So it sort of like came from my personal story or whatever of having that and like doctors like interfering and things like that. So, yeah. And like it's a pretty out there idea really, yeah. isn't it? When one would normally think art is a painting and you've yeah. got glass beakers yeah. with things in them. How long did this process take? Um, it was definitely evolving. Like, it took me a long time to sort of figure out what I was doing as well as make them. What was the germ of the idea? That you wanted to focus on the diseases that you have or the, these illnesses? Or um, where like, did it come from? I always sort of wanted to do it personal because I think it adds more of a, a deep concept, sort of, if that makes sense. Um, and, yeah, from that I sort of just started creating things. I originally was doing them out of fabrics and making, like, sculptures out of fabric, but then it sort of evolved into translucency and how that created fragility and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, they're very beautiful. Thank well you. done. Thank well you. done. All right, let's go to our Bathurst boy, Joe. Is it very cold in Bathurst at the moment, Joe, in your jumper? Um, Snowing? No, quite hot. Yep. At the moment. Right. Um, not actually there at the moment, though, so I wouldn't be able to Good tell Good observation. You. Tell me, Joe, which piece of art is yours? The piece of art that is mine is called Street Dreams, and it's a number of projections that I did in the street at night. And it's all of my... some of my close friends and some people from my school and my cousin all doing different movements and things like skateboarding, hula hooping, um, kicking a soccer ball, all of that, and then projected onto walls at night. Did, all right, let's start at the beginning. So does everybody know which piece of art we're talking about? All right, for those of us who are normal people, we'd probably say the video, wouldn't we? That would be correct. The video? Yeah, right. Now, I want you to walk us through it. Where did we get the idea? Um, I was watching TV with Mum one night and we saw this artist called Craig Walsh. I'd never heard of him before. And then he did projections of faces into trees and then that kind of sparked my idea and then yeah but it's very beautiful the work that you've done because the slow motion is of course so emotional and and wonderfully evocative and then you've got that great soundtrack you I noticed in the comments that you wrote with the work of art that it was these things that people can be really good at that they will never necessarily make a, a living out of yeah they'll never achieve so you saw this bloke. out of it. You saw the bloke's work, and he was projecting it in trees. But you still had to come to the idea of what you actually wanted to project. So, how did you get that? To enable performance space for people, so I did it on walls, like for youth, who they're always doing things that these people that I know are always are all very skilled in what they do, and it, it's actually really beautiful because when you slow it down, as you have. Everyday activities become so poetic, don't they? And so beautiful, the hula hoop and kicking a ball. Now, when we were watching it, we were one, we meaning myself and Andrew from the gallery, we were wondering if you actually projected it onto the buildings in post or if you did it live. I did it live. Did you? Yes. That is a mighty good achievement. Thank you. Yeah. So, now, it, did you intend the juxtaposition between the youth and their activities and the old buildings that you projected on, or was that just an accident? Um, that was an accident, actually. Okay. Yeah. Art is a lot of accidents, isn't it? But it's beautiful. And were you surprised it got into Art Express? Um, yeah, I was definitely surprised, but um, I knew it was pretty powerful, but I didn't think it would make it this far. Well, it is. It's beautiful. And well done, Joe. Well done. <laughs>
Now, Elise, tell us. Tell us about your work. Um, my wor work was about my neighbour, George. Do we all know the piece called George? The same three people who've bothered to do their homework. <laughs> all right, it's brilliant. Describe it for us, Elise, so they all know what they're missing out on. Um, well, it was objects out of his house. Who's George? Your neighbour? George is my neighbour. And then what happened to George? Uh, he passed away while I was doing my body of work and left us his house and his money. And so, yeah. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> Where do you live? Can I come there too? Is this normal? <laughs> Wasn't that much money, but... <laughs> oh, OK. But nevertheless, you had a neighbour. Yes. Had you started doing your artwork based on George yep. prior to him passing away? Yes. Was this a clever plan of yours to <laughs> get the money? No, I didn't kill him. <laughs> oh, you didn't? Because I was thinking, that is an extraordinary commitment to your no. HSC work. <laughs> Particularly as all of this is being recorded, but never mind. <laughs> Moving on, say straight down the camera, I did not kill him, and then we'll move on. So there's George, he's 97, he lives yes. next door, he's a multi-millionaire, and what <laughs> happens? Um, well, he just had a really humble life, and he lived on the bare necessities. And yeah, I wanted to focus that on that in my body of work and show that he was still happy, even now, though he didn't have much. It's very interesting, because looking at your work... Is it meant to be kind of a forensic study in the sense that we should describe it to people? There, there are elements of George's life. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want to finish the sentence? That Elise broke into the house after murdering him <laughs> and obviously before the police arrived. And yes. you went in. I didn't have your, long. You didn't have long. You had your camera and you photographed pivotal items in the house. Yeah, well, I grabbed objects that... I think still held a meaning, even though he was gone. A meaning to you or to him? To him. Yeah, that describes like moments in his life and stuff like that. And so I removed them from their environment so they look sterile. So did they hold that meaning still? Yeah. And then you put them all together and from an audience, what did you want your audience to feel as they looked at these pieces? Um, I just wanted them to reflect on what was important in life and that... I'm not really sure. It's very... No, it's OK, because one of the weird things about doing your HSC is you meant... What are those things called? Journals or whatever those books... Is that what they're called? Yeah. I did have two children do art for the HSC, but I've clearly erased the horrific years from my mind. So they're called journals. Yeah. And you've got to substantiate your work. Yeah, you've but got to say what you did. But, of course, many prominent artists never do anything of that sort, yes. do they? <laughs> so it's this little bit of theoretic theory that's added that some of you may fabricate as you go along trying to justify yes. the existence of your work. Right, OK. We've mastered that. All right. So when we looked at these, which are beautifully photographed, did you study photography at school? I did in as elective, yeah. All right. And then you had to choose how to present them. And for me it was interesting because it is like a forensic study because yeah. as you go through you think, well, who was this person? Mm. So, is that the kind of... It's supposed to be able to relate to everybody and not just one person. Yeah. So, I didn't want people to... I did want them to know about it was about George, but that it could be transferred to other. And had you seen anything at all similar to the way you presented this? Um, Joseph Cornell did the boxes of memories and stuff, so I yeah. wanted to incorporate that. Yeah. Well, it, it's very beautiful. Well Thank done. You. Well done. All right, now we've got the man who... I would be envious of, although you've probably got tenosynovitis, McLaren, have you? Tell us why you've got tenosynovitis. Um, because I had to uh, click about 2,500 Dymo labels individually. Dymo labels. All right. Well, McLaren did the piece of work. When you go in there, it's wonderful. It's big and black. And on closer inspection, it's a whole lot of Dymo labels with questions on them. Did you hire people to do them for you? Um, I didn't hire people at all. But I, I bet your myself. mother played a part in it, didn't she? Um, on the record, no. <laughs> but right. she was very helpful. helpful <laughs> about, yeah. All right, now, the questions, what's the basis? Where did this come from? That, are you obsessed with our obsession with questions? Oh, there's another question, sorry. I'll Go put on. that one on the next <laughs> one. <laughs> Go um, on. Well, I, I just kind of... It's really kind of representational of my mind because I think a lot... Um, but don't we all? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>
But um, yeah, so I was thinking about what, what I should do for the HSC and obviously that was a question and I just kept on going on and on and on until I went, oh, hang on, I'll do something on questioning. So that one big piece of work, how many hours do you think that took? Uh, I, I can't really tell off the top of my head, but it, it took the full... Um, I, I started pretty much as soon as I could in the end of year 11, well, like term one, year 12, um, and it finished the night before it was due. So. And so, because sometimes we come across people who do their work of art in the last week. Mm. You clearly didn't do that. No, no, I, I came up with the idea, and in, in my head I had an image of what I wanted it to look like, and I stuck to that, and I didn't change it, and in the end I, I got it. <laughs> And I was very happy. Yeah, it really looks magnificent. And then you've got the video next to it, and we've got projections, which is very interestingly treated, I think, the way that you've done that. Mm. And then you've got questions across people's minds. I couldn't hear the audio. Are they talking? Um, no, uh, the audio is the clicking of the Dymo label, right, uh, Maker. Yeah. So essentially, yeah, it's just click, Fantastic. click, click, click. And that's pretty much what I've been hearing for the past 12 months in my head. I bet, yeah. and probably for years to come. Yes. But it, it's beautiful, and I'm very conscious of time because there are two other salient questions I want to ask, but we must go to Dear Daisy. Now, Daisy, your category is for art, what would we call it? Sculpture. Sculpture. And yet you told me it's found objects. Now, I thought this meant you walked along the street on tip day and you just took things. But it also means you didn't buy them. Is that right? This, this is, is this yeah. a genre of sculpture? Yes, found object art means it's all recycled. Nothing's new. All right. And you're a musician. Yes. Okay. So clearly you didn't do this the night before the work was due in. No, I actually finished it about a month in advance, but I then had to mount them all, which took the rest of the time. All right. And you mean... We, we need to describe standing. to everybody, what, what are they? I have six sculptures and they're representations of musical instruments. So one looks like a cello, one looks like a sitar and um, yeah, they, none of them work. Everyone asks me, are they playable and none of them are. Um, so they're just representations, they're sort of my interpretation of... Um, yeah, instruments. You're a musician, so yes. obviously instruments are String in String instruments, mind. yes. Okay, and then you had friends who for some reason didn't need bits of their instruments but needed other bits. I don't, yes. I don't understand it, but... Being a musician, I had connections with music stores who I called up and said, hey, when you're going to throw out an instrument, don't give it to me. And so I was um, handed three baby violins and a couple of cello scrolls and some pegs and bridges and... I put them all together. Now, putting them all together, sometimes people's parents help. You're clearly that didn't happen. Who helped you? Who advised? Do you do woodwork? How did you know how to no, do it? No, I, um, I never did woodwork, but I was always... I was never really interested in just sitting and drawing or painting. I was um, much more of a hands-on, I want to make something. And so it... Um, I sort of... I pieced it all together on the ground and said, I need to put this there, and then I thought, how am I going to attach it? So I went to hardware stores and, you know, I said... And they taught you. I've got this piece of wood that needs to go with this piece of metal. How do I do it? And had you seen anything similar that inspired you? Um, I guess found object art isn't something that's that common. It's becoming more of a common um, form of art, except, yeah, I had, um, I had a friend who went overseas and saw a, um, an exhibition of an artist called Aman and sent me all these photos and said, check out this guy and look at his works because he did found object art. And then sort of um, the whole representations, because they don't look identical, they yeah, came from probably um, Braque and Picasso was actually, yeah, they were some of my influences. They're pretty impressive influences. You don't need to roll your eyes when you say Picasso. I wasn't rolling them. I was going, hey, go check out the exhibition. Well, can I, can I just point out you are sharing a gallery with him at the moment. Yes, it's very exciting. It's no mean achievement for all of you. Now, for those of you who are studying, obviously the key to a lot of these things is, is uniqueness. You know, that's why you guys are here, because you had a uniqueness of vision. And it's an interesting thing with that, with so many things being accessible now and so many of you being taught that there's no, nothing new uh, in film and writing and all of that business. It's, 
it makes you realise in an exhibition like this just how important that unique perspective actually is. But what you must also have is a teacher that doesn't say to you what a load of rubbish. Were you, I, some of you won't be able to answer honestly because presumably your teachers are in the audience. Um, your teacher's not here, so tell us, tell us everything. Did, your, did you feel supported? What did, did your friends go, what a stupid idea? Now, we're, we're on the home stretch here because we're running out of time. But just quickly, how important was family support or, or uh, school support? Well, from my art teacher, she's, she's more of a traditional artist, so she didn't really understand when I'd bring in my laptop, she'd always be like, what are you doing? Like, she didn't really get it. So um, I think, like... She kind of just gave me a bit of space to, to do weird things with my computer. So, like, and, like, do weird photo shoots and stuff in the studio, just experimenting. But she, um, yeah, she was really supportive. She always gave me ideas that she thought would make it look better. And she kind of still gave me breathing room, which was really nice. Great. And um, mum and dad were really helpful. Dad's always been a bit of a handyman, so he's always, um, he knows how to put together things, so he helped me mount it, mount the artwork, and, yeah. Fantastic. Now let's pass it along. We'll just quickly hear, what about you, McLaren? Did the teacher go, Dymo tape, are you kidding? Um, no, not really. What Teacher's does he in think? The room. Did, you, did you do that? Did you go, whoa? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you challenged him a bit. Well, rightly so. <laughs> There's your answer. Well, it worked, didn't it? Congratulations. You know, it's a credit to everybody getting in here. Yeah. Okay, so you, were, you felt supported. What about you, the rebel from Bathurst? I felt very supported during, <laughs> Did during you? my time school? making my artwork. But the school encouraged you? Yeah, very much so. Are you the first person from your school to have something in Art Express? Um, I don't think so. There was a girl last year that had something in Dubbo. I thought you said something Dumbo, but she was from Dubbo. Yeah. Right, good. Glad we cleared no, that up. No, not from Dubbo. In du it was in Dubbo. Oh, was it? Cool. Oh, mm. for the regional tour. Okay. Yeah. So, supportive and your mum, of course, was on the couch when you came up with the idea. My mum is also an art teacher at my school. <laughs> Make a note of that. It's who you know, okay? <laughs> well, good on her. Holly, what about you? Did the, did the class go, what on earth are you doing? Um, yeah, like, a lot of the students were a bit like, okay, like, this is not that cool. But, like, in the end, like, it sort of worked out. I know, like, my teachers were always really, like, constructive in, like, helping me. And, like, my parents were, like, good at helping me source, like, resin and things that I'd never even, like, known about. So that was always really good. And that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. You need that. What about you, Daisy? Um, yeah, all the teachers from the art department and woodwork and everyone who sort of saw it, my drama teacher, they were all really, really supportive. They just encouraged me to keep doing what I was doing. And um, even though I think a lot of um, people my age, if they're not a classical musician, I think people really struggle to understand what mine's about. You know, they read my cross-cultural harmony musical and they don't really understand, but even so, they found them interesting and supported me through it. Yeah, it's, t it's really tough being an artist. You need that support and encouragement because you're grabbing onto an idea from nowhere, aren't you? Elise, was that the same for you? Yeah, all well, my teachers are really, really supportive. And I was there the last night with my art teacher. She came into school. We were there till it was dark, eating pizza and doing art. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Is she here? Yes. Yeah, she's here. Where are you? Oh, well done. Bravo. <laughs> Although you shouldn't be eating pizza late at night. No, bad for you. Okay, now, everybody, I'm sorry, I would love to have question time because there's so many things that we want to know about this. But is the, is the exhibition open now for everybody to wander up? Okay, so it's there. And can I just quickly ask, having achieved this, which is an enormous thing, to survive the HSC and to get your artwork into Art Express is amazing. Who's going to continue with art? <laughs> you are? You're practising? Kind of. Graphic design, what? Art history. Art history, kind of. Media. Media. Holly? Architecture. Architecture, yes. NIDA. NIDA. Media. Media. All right, we're all sort of in there. Okay, <laughs> girls, I hope this helps you get into Art Express. All right, and you guys, are you going to be up there with your works if people have any questions? 
All right, so you'll be standing next to them. You've been a fantastic audience. I'm sorry to be hurrying us all up now, but we're only meant to go until seven. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and for coming here this evening. And thank you to our wonderful panel.